welcome. In this lecture, I am going to talk about the scientific method and importance of technical communication in the context of the scientific method. I am also going to give you some practical guidelines. So, why is technical communication important? Review or criticism of the hypothesis or a model or a theory proposed by a scientist, by a technician, by an engineer, by a scientific personnel, by the scientific community is an extremely important component of the scientific investigations. Now, who are qualified to do this review? Well, of course, the review by or criticism by the peers, peers are those who are acknowledged by the entire community to be experts in a particular field, but criticism or review by novice, a budding researcher is also welcome. So, we do not restrict who should criticize, who should evaluate, anyone can criticize, anyone can test, anyone can look at a model, a hypothesis or a theory. Of course, we expect that a novice or a budding researcher does his criticism under supervision of experts. So, this implies that as a person working in the area of science and technology, you should subject your work to criticism. Publishing results of a scientific investigation may be in form of a technical or a project report or a journal or a conference publication, a paper or a research monograph or your graduate, masters or a PhD dissertation or a patent. There are different forms of scientific communication. Communicating your work in any one of these forms is a crucial step in the advancement of science and technology. Contrary to what we believe, the science and technology progresses through a collective effort, a collective effort by the entire scientific community. And what is this collective effort? This is through publishing and the review process. Well, when a war is won, we remember the generals, but what all of us know is that a war cannot be won unless every foot soldier, everyone from the background staff, everyone who is putting their efforts to make this war successful participates in some way or the other. The same is true about a scientific endeavor. Even though we remember certain discoveries by some famous scientist or famous engineers, everyone, you and me participate in this process of this development of science and technology through publishing our work, to, to publishing our findings in different forums, criticizing others, criticizing work, model, hypothesis of others and thereby improving, thereby coming up with better understanding of the causative mechanism these models or hypotheses are trying to explain. So, technical communication is extremely important, disseminating results of your scientific investigation is extremely important step in the progress of science and technology. So, just look at this cartoon which explains how it happens. To begin with, you have to have a question that you are investigating and you may have an interesting observation. Maybe you do not have full explanation why you are observing a particular behavior, but if you have an interesting observation, you should communicate. Rosalind Franklin, who actually published X-ray diffraction pattern of DNA molecule, probably did not fully explain why particular shapes were seen, but she communicated her observation. She communicated the X-ray diffraction pattern result she got. Watson and Crick later on observed these patterns and used these patterns to validate the hypothesis they had that a DNA molecule has a helical structure. So, 
it is important to communicate interesting observations. There are others, other researchers, other scientists who are looking at this literature to validate their theories, validate their hypothesis and this is an ongoing process. You propose a hypothesis, develop a model, come up with predictions, develop test to check your predictions and if you get satisfactory results, you communicate these results to the literature in different forms, maybe a research paper, maybe a patent. And then somebody else looks at this hypothesis, looks at this model, comes up with some new predictions, comes up with tests that try to see whether these new predictions are uh, correct or also observed in the experimental data. If not, this new person, this other scientist revises the hypothesis, revises the model and come up with a new model or a new hypothesis that confirms with the new observations and this group of scientists communicates their results and so on. So, this is an ongoing process, this is a continued process which keeps improving our understanding of the observed phenomena. So, what are the practical guidelines for applying scientific method? First of all, you should understand that the scientific method is not a do it yourself recipe. It requires knowledge, it requires skill, it requires intelligence, it requires creativity. You have to apply all these together to solve a scientific problem. The first and foremost step is to be able to define a question. This is one of the critical steps. If you are a budding researcher, your supervisor tells you go and find a problem from the literature review. This is nothing but defining a question. Then we start gathering information that is relevant to this question. We look at the literature, we look at conference publications, we look at journal publications, we look at monographs, we look at patents and we gather information about what others have done about this question, about this problem. After having done that, we evaluate different research options and formulate a hypothesis, a model. This possibly would be a new hypothesis or a new model. Then we perform or we design and perform experiments and gather data to test the hypothesis or test the model. We analyze and interpret the data that is collected from our experiments and we validate our hypothesis or model and most important part is that we publish, we publish validated hypothesis and model and the results. So, we communicate these findings of our investigation in the standard accepted scientific forums. Now, somebody else looks at this model, somebody else looks at this predictions, somebody else looks at these results and if this new hypothesis that you have proposed, if it is not able to explain some other observations, then this new group proposes a new model or a new hypothesis and the process goes on. So, it is important to look at the literature, find what has been already done about the question that you are investigating. If you are not satisfied with the explanations, come up with a new explanation, come up with a new hypothesis devise tests to validate your hypothesis and then most important communicate your results. Subject it to peer review, let the experts in the field look at what you have done and then comment upon what uh, results that you have got, the explanations that you are providing. What are the common pitfalls in this? Well, one of the common pitfall particularly when you are a beginner is to assume that a hypothesis is actually an explanation. 
this is what I mean is without even testing you start believing that this is a correct explanation for the phenomena that you are investigating. This typically happens in the beginning when you are a budding researcher, your supervisor has told you that well this is my hypothesis, let us do these experiments. In the beginning we try to look at only those data points which confirm with the hypothesis that your supervisor has uh, told you. Well, we do not think that the hypothesis the supervisor has told could be wrong. So, we try to ignore the data that is actually pointing to something else. One more important thing is we do not many times systematically quantify errors in the measurement. There could be two kinds of errors in the measurement. One error could be random error. So, we have to repeatedly do experiments to eliminate the effect of random errors, but there could be systematic errors. In fact, there could be some background of systematic errors which are pointing to some new phenomena, new explanation, new hypothesis. Because in the beginning we assume that the hypothesis that we start with is an explanation, we tend to ignore this systematic errors and the mistake that we make here is that we actually miss out on certain phenomena, certain explanation that these systematic errors are pointing out. If you want to know more about this scientific method, learn more about it, these are some of the references. You can look into the web. Looking at how scientific method works through some famous example, through reports, through research papers, through scientific monographs helps us to develop our own skill of applying scientific method to new problems and expand the horizon of science and technology.